Well, good morning, Christ Church. Man, it is good to see you guys today. So excited for today. Before we dive in, I know uh, Joey and, and Alan and all of you for the last couple of weeks uh, about our online campus. Today, we celebrate a year online with our online campus, and the impact of that has been un- unbelievable. Uh, so they've been feeding me every week. They send me names of people logged in. I'm going to pull them up here real quick. Uh, welcome a couple of people in with us today. Uh, we've got somebody logged in from like Hawaii right now, which I'm like, man, go back to bed. It's so early there. Uh, Mike Hocklander from Kansas City. Uh, he's logged in. By the way, Mike owns a company called the Hatfield and McCoy Beef Jerky. Bro, thank you for that beef jerky. That stuff's amazing. Go buy some of it. He's got bacon, like as beef jerky. Uh, we got Amy from Lebanon. We've got uh, Wendy logged in and a whole slew of other people, plus our house campuses, Ghana, Africa. Uh, we've got Hicksville, Ohio. We have got all over the country logged in. So welcome all of them in with us this morning, if you don't mind. <laughs> By the way, that little cake that Alan just had, Joey and I ate. Well, I may have eaten a whole one of those while we were talking to the online campus today, so don't judge me too hard for that. Uh, But every weekend that we gather, we stand, we read a scripture together. Um, So everybody get on your feet. If you don't mind, if you're online right now, get on your feet. We're going to read from Joshua 18, uh, verse 3 together, just like we do every weekend. Let's read it out loud. How long will you wait to take possession of the land? Let's pray. Father, today. God, my prayer is, is that as we, as we dig into scripture today, God, that you would, you would transform the lives of your people. God, that the way we walked in here will not be the same way that, that we walk out of here. That, God, you will do something uh, of redemption in the lives of your people. That, God, you would infiltrate the hearts and the souls of each and every one of us, whether we're online or we're, we're in this room right now. God, my prayer is uh, for those that have walked in here today that, that had the courage to walk into church. God, I pray that today they would meet you face to face. But God, the, the message of God would be at the forefront today. Uh, the message of man would be at the background today. That God, uh, what happens in this place is there's nothing short of your movement. God, I'm thankful that we get to gather. I'm thankful for all of our venues, whether that's here, whether that's our chapel, whether that's online. Uh, God, I thank you. God, thank you for last night. And God, I pray that you would continue to use Christ Church uh, to infiltrate the land that you've called us to. God, we love you. It's your name we pray. And all God's people said, you can be seated. So today concludes one of those series that, um, honestly, uh, our preaching team, when we get together, we, we actually plan the entire year in advance. So we've already planned all of 2019, which I'm, I didn't even think that was a real year until I said it out loud, right? Um, and we planned out 2019. Uh, when we were planning out 2018, sometimes we have these series, and I'm like, man, that's going to be a good one. Like some of you guys may see these coming, you're like, I don't want to miss that one. This was one of those, I was like, it'll be all right. It'll be okay. Going through Joshua was cool. And then we got into it. And, and I just have to tell you, I'm a, I'm a little like, I'm mourning the fact that we're not going to be doing Joshua next week because I've seen, I've seen people grow in their faith. I've seen people grow in their freedom. I've seen people grow in, in wanting to go and help their neighbors know more about Jesus and, and, and shine this, this transformation in the lives of our community. And so uh, we come today kind of to the precipice of the book of Joshua. We come to this moment that has been building towards, they've already taken the land, but there's this moment that, that happens and, and it's really solidifying that, that Joshua is going to tell the, the nation of Israel, which in turn is also telling us that the time is now. The time is now. Uh, I'll never forget standing there. The, the line was starting to form behind me and, and I was just paralyzed with fear. You've been paralyzed with fear. And I'm just, I'm standing there and I'm beginning to shake and I'm having this moment like I need to get, I need to just walk away. But the fear, the fear of walking away was as big as the fear of going ahead. From the back of the line, I could hear a commotion starting to pick up. At one point, the commotion turned from just commotion to someone just decided they were going to yell something at me. So I just hear, would you go already, you pansy? I was like, I'm pretty sure you didn't call me a flower. So, um... What does that mean? <laughs> then then the, the, the verbal barbed wire got even like hotter. I started to hear, hey, you baby. Hey, you chicken. Why don't you go? And I was like, this is getting real. And I just remember standing there paralyzed with this fear. And it felt like 45 minutes. I think it was like 45 seconds. It, and it was overwhelming. And, and I came to this moment, like I had a decision to make. It, the time was either going to be now or maybe never. And I had to make a decision. And I knew how this played out if I decided to walk away. I'd seen other people walk away. They were made fun of profusely. 
I didn't want to go through that. So finally, with everything I could muster inside of me, uh, I held on for dear life, and I took my five-year-old body and flung it down the slide at the public pool. <laughs> All four foot three of me into the four foot five inch shallow end. You know it's a bad day when you can't touch in the shallow end? <laughs> and I remember thinking, this is how it ends. I'm going to die right here. It's been good. A good run. This was fun. This is a good way to go. And my body hit the water. I'm pretty sure it may have skipped a little bit because I wasn't a big guy when I was little, right? And, and I think it skipped and I went down and my feet hit the bottom for the first time. And then I pushed myself off the bottom and I remember hurling to the top out of breath. I don't know why. It was like 14 feet, okay, down the slide. It's not like I was running a mile. And I shoot out of the water and, you know, I'm kind of gasping for breath. And then I had this moment where I was like, I cannot wait to do that again. Why did I wait so long? So you know what I did the rest of the day? Up and down that stupid ladder. I conquered the aqua-colored beast. Anybody else have that same aqua-colored slide at your public pool growing up? Anybody? You know what was funny? I don't know what was wrong with the generation that taught me how to swim. That was my test in order to be able to go in the deep end. To slide off a slide into the shallow end was my test to go into the deep end. After that, they were like, you passed. You can jump off the high dive and the low dive. I'm like, I can't touch in the shallow end. <laughs> but you got yourself out of the pool. Awesome. Here's your certificate. Now go play in the water. And it was that moment, that time is now moment, that I could have decided to just crawl down the ladder and maybe never had that experience. Now, I know that sounds crazy because that's a five-year-old in a swimming pool, right? But how many of you has that played out in actual life for you? Not, not on a water slide, but maybe it was a different moment for you where you were going to have to either retreat or you're going to have to ramp up and do what you were supposed to do. For some of you, that's your marriage. Your marriage was in this state of emergency and you had to make a decision that I'm either going to retreat, I'm going to run away, I can't do this anymore, or you're going to ramp up and go, you know what, I'm going to do what God has called me to do. I'm going to fight for my marriage. Some of you have been there. For some of you, it was an addiction. And you found yourself in a moment of life where you could have retreated and stayed in the darkness of your addiction, or you could ramp up into the light and, and don't live there any longer. And you decided that if you stayed in the darkness, you may not make it to the next day. So you ramped up. For, for some of you, it, it's a job. You felt like God was calling you to do this or do that. And you were like, I don't want to go through the rest of my life wondering what if I would have done that instead of this. And so instead of retreating for what God called you to, you ramped up towards it. And God's done some amazing things. Maybe it's with your kids. Maybe it's with a job. For some of you today, can I be honest with you? It's your faith right now your faith. Some of you today, you, you've been retreating from God. And I believe for, for all of us today, there's going to be decisions that we have to make, every single one of us. Whether you know Jesus or you don't, there's decisions each of us have to make. For some of you today, this is the day that you're going to drive a stake in the ground like Joshua is going to call us to, like he called the Israelites to, and, and take the ground that he has called you to take. For some of you, you've been retreating from God, not following wholeheartedly after him you partially in, but you haven't gone all in. You've been willing to give part or a portion of who you are to God, but you've not been willing to give all of yourself. And so today's the day that we're going to stop retreating and we're going to start ramping up to what it looks like to be in relationship with him. In fact, I, I want you to write that down today, if you don't mind. If you got pens or you got your, your phone or you, you put it in the notes section or whatever, and it's just it's time to stop retreating and, and start ramping up. And we're going to unpack what God has to say about that. So turn in your Bibles to Joshua chapter 21. And in Joshua chapter 21, uh, God's people realize that this now is becoming a time is now moment. And Joshua is going to build into the nation of Israel this moment that's going to build to. Go to verse 43. It says, so the Lord gave to Israel what? How much of the land? All the land. He had sworn to give their ancestors, by the way, their ancestors. Let me just stop there for a minute. Uh, just keep in mind, there was a whole group of people, generation upon generation, that did not get this, but they were promised, your ancestors are going to walk into this land. We're talking hundreds of years of generations that God said, your descendants will see this. So don't miss that. 
They, he gave them the, the land. He swore to give their ancestors. They took possession of it, and they settled there, and the Lord gave them what? Rest on every side. That's key. We'll come back to that. Just as he had solemnly promised their ancestors, none of their enemies could stand against them, for the Lord helped them conquer all of their enemies. Not just some of them, all of their enemies. Not a single one of all the good promises the Lord had given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken did what? Everything he spoke came true. But I love how Joshua rolls into this, and Joshua closes with these three wonderful affirmations. He, he affirms some things that you see here. The first affirmation was God was faithful and gave Israel the land. Like God had promised that. He'd made it and kept a covenant with them. It goes all the way back to Abraham and all the way back to their descendants. And God kept his promise to his people. That was the first affirmation. The second, God gave Israel victory over their enemies. He gave them victory. He promised he would do it. And, and then the third thing is God kept his promises. Every single one of them. Scripture says he kept every single one of them. So as the people of God, those of you that know Jesus, those of you that claim Yahweh God as your God, those affirmations are not just for the nation of Israel, they're for you and me as well. That we can live on the promises of God. God's promises are not going to fail. When I was growing up, we used to sing this song, Standing on the Promises. Anybody grow up in church sing that? Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Right? Some of you guys like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But you, you can take those, like you can take them to the bank. You can stand on the promises of God. God's power, God's wisdom can give us victory over opposition. And some of you guys are going, yeah, but I feel like God promised me this. Here's what I would say. If God has promised you something, then put that against scripture. Does it really line up with God's promises? And some of you guys are like, yeah, well, I've been praying about this and God has not answered me. Let me remind us, myself included, sometimes no is an answer. Anybody like being told no, by the way? Anybody? You just love no. You ask somebody to do something and you, they're like, no. And you're like, that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Please, sir, I'll have another. No. Awesome. Keep doing it. Like, we don't like to be told no. You, you know how I know that? I've got children. <laughs> the first time you ask a toddler to go do something and they go, no. You're like, wrath of God is about to fall in this house. The Almighty is going to drop a bomb in your bedroom, and it's called Daddy. And you know why sometimes you say no to your kids? Because sometimes your kids need to hear no because it's not the right thing for them. And there's these moments where God's like, my promises are true, and I'm saying not right now because you're not ready. And I think sometimes we're like, God just didn't answer me. God answered, we just didn't like it. His promises don't fail. Over and over again, they don't fail. So, so remember that there, there were two and a half tribes that didn't go on across the Jordan. Remember that? They went in to fight, but they weren't going to reside there. So Joshua gives them an honorable discharge. If you go over to, to Joshua chapter 22, uh, verse 1, it, it says this, Then Joshua called together the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. So that's two and a half tribes. And he told them, you've done as Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you. You've obeyed every order I've given you. During all this time, you have not deserted the other tribes. You have been called, you've been careful to obey the commands of the Lord your God. Right up to the present day. And now the Lord your God has given the other tribes what? Rest. As he promised them. So go back home to the land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you as your possession on the east of the Jordan River. But be very careful to obey all the commands and the instructions that Moses gave you. He's like, be careful of these. Love the Lord your God. Which, by the way, comes straight out of, uh, of Scripture. Comes straight out of, uh, of the, like the Israelite nation would have known exactly where this is coming from. Walk in all his ways. Obey his commands. Hold firmly to him. And serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. He gives them this honorable discharge. They fulfilled their mission. They kept their promise. They stayed on that side and fought with the rest of the nation of Israel. You wonder if they had that moment there where they're like, we should have stayed in the full fight. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have asked for that land. We, we should have come like the promise land. God kept this promise. But there's this concept that shows up. You've seen it a couple times, the concept of rest. Now we hear rest and we're like, we need a nap, Right? Like, I, I think, of like, Sunday afternoons, I always joke, like, I go home in, like, a preaching hangover. Like, I get done, and, like, I'm emotionally spent, and I'm like, I need a preaching nap. So I go home and take a nap, and I watch, like, football through one eye. That's not the rest that God is talking about in Scripture right here. 
That is not the rest he is getting after. In fact, the word rest, if you look up this word rest in Joshua and what he talks about, it literally means victory and security. So when he says, I'm giving you rest, I'm giving you victory, I'm giving you security, and he's, like, he's looking at us and going, hey, do you want victory and do you want security? Because I've called you to take the land, and when you're faithful, the rest that you get is victory and security in God himself. And it involved Israel having a resting place in the land. God had promised them rest. That application of rest, by the way, wasn't just for them. If you go over to the book of Hebrews chapter 4, it's for us as well. He says this. Now, if Joshua, I love this. Here's scripture tying to itself, okay? Going over to the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 8. Now, if Joshua has succeeded in giving them rest, which by the way, who gave them rest? God. It wasn't Joshua. God gave them rest. God would not have spoken about another day of rest still to come. So there's a special rest still waiting for the people of God. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested for their labors, just as God did after creating the world. So let us do our best to enter that rest. And I love what he says here. He goes, but if we disobey, as the people of Israel did, we will what? We'll fall. We'll fall. He's like, obey what God has called you. Live in the promise of that rest, the victory and the security of God. I love what Warren Wearsby says. He's a theologian, uh, commentator. He says, when we trust Christ as Savior, we enter into rest because we're no longer at war with who? God. Like our war is not against flesh and blood. Sometimes because we're not faithful, because we're, we're only half-heartedly in with God, we've, we put war against God, not against anyone else. Because if you want real rest, then it's claiming the inheritance that God has given in his promises. It's giving into to what God has called us to, that we enter into deep rest and our spiritual richness comes from, from Christ alone. It is there that our faith begins to, to ramp up. When we stop retreating from the promises of God and we start ramping up towards the promises of God, God's like, watch what I will do with my people. I will give you a victory and a security, but I'm going to keep pushing you forward moving you into what I've called you to. Don't, don't miss this. Like, don't, don't forget, it. it's time to stop retreating and time to start ramping up. By the way, growing up, did you ever build any shady ramps? I did. Remember BMX bikes? Any of you probably, you know, anywhere from the age of 35 and up, anybody have a BMX bike? Like, it was the bike. Or when Mongoose wasn't at Walmart, like, it actually cost a lot of money for a Mongoose bike. I remember having a BMX. Me and my friends were complete idiots. You're like, you still are. I know. We built some of the shadiest ramps on the planet. I mean, you've seen Napoleon Dynamite with Pedro and him jumping off some sweet ramps? They had nothing on us. I mean, plywood that was rotted in the middle. And my friends could talk me into just about anything if it meant a good laugh. Thank God YouTube did not exist when I was a kid. Some of you guys are like, amen to that. And I remember going off to some of them ramps and having these moments like, I survived. And they always gave you a good story, right? Because when you ramped up, like you had a decision to make. Do I go all in or do I hit the brakes and really hurt myself? I'm like, if I'm really going to hurt myself, let's, let's do this for real. Like I've got a scar right here on my finger. This scar tells a story of ramping up in life. I was in sixth grade. We built the shadiest ramp known to man. I think it was like made out of cardboard, if you want to know the truth, and maybe a cinder block. And I hit that cinder block going as fast as my little sixth grade legs could go, went over the handlebars, ripped all the skin off my finger. And we had sixth grade graduation, which by the way, I think that's the day that it became a thing that we had graduations before you were a senior in high school. By the way, that's stupid, y'all. <laughs> Celebrate when they get out of high school. Not sixth grade, okay? If you make it out of sixth grade, welcome to life. That's what we're all supposed to do, okay? That's like kindergarten graduation. You can color, way to go, okay? Like. But I remember going to sixth grade graduation and it was, our gym had no air conditioning and I had open wounds. And I was like, every time the sweat would drip into it, it was like, that was awesome. I conquered the ramp. You know, that's the crazy thing about ramping up in your faith. God takes you on these amazing journeys. And sometimes you have these scars and you go, that was amazing. How did we survive that? How did we get there? Well, because God was faithful in his promise. God was faithful to who he said he is. And don't miss this because sometimes we wonder why man, we just don't feel settled in life. And I'm not talking about like you just had a baby and you haven't slept in like seven years. 
I'm talking like real rest. Why we feel like everything's always up in the air. Maybe it's because we've never really leaned into trusting God the way that God's called us to. That we've kind of been at war with God a little bit. Instead of leaning into the promise, Joshua's ready for the rest. The nation of Israel is ready uh, for the rest. And now we see in chapter 23 and 24, where Joshua gives his final words to Israel. And he walks them through this renewed covenant with God. Like the nation of Israel, their story is really simple. God delivers, they rebel, God punishes, they, they renew. Then they rebel, God punishes, they renew. Does this sound familiar to your life or to my life or to our life? And as we get to the end of this, there's this renewal of God's covenant with his people because Joshua has led them to this point. There, there's no question where Joshua stands at this point. There's no question. You're going to see it here in a minute. He's going to commission the nation of Israel. He's going to mission God's people. He's going to, he's going to tell them, listen, this is what God has for you. And now, the time is now. And it's the same commission that I give to myself, that I give to my family, that I give to our church, that I give to each and every one of us as we gather. So I want you to go to chapter 24. And I want you to go to verse 14. So Joshua starts this way. He goes, so fear the Lord and serve him how? Wholeheartedly, not halfheartedly, wholeheartedly. Serve him with every ounce of who you are. And he says, put away forever the idols your ancestors worshiped when they lived beyond the Euphrates and, and Egypt. And some of you guys are like, I don't have ancestors in Egypt or the Euphrates. Yeah, but we've all got idols in our lives. All of us. Then he goes on to say this. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, he says, then do what? Choose today whom you'll serve. If you refuse to serve the Lord, he's like, today's the day. Choose this day whom you will serve. And then he says, would you prefer the God your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? In other words, do you want to go back to the way it was? Do you want to go back to when you were enslaved in Egypt? Do you want to go back uh, to before you were delivered? Do you want to go back to all of those moments where it, it wasn't the promises of God, but it was the promises of something else? He's like, do you really want that? He goes, will it be the, the gods of the Amorites in those lands that, that you now live? He says, but as for me and my family, what's he say? will serve the Lord. Now, some of you guys are like, in my translation, it says, that's for me in my house. How many of you guys memorized that as a kid? It's for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. Some of you guys have it crocheted on a pillow in that room nobody can go in. <laughs> Maybe you have it on a wall hanging on the wall. It's for me in my house, we will serve uh, the Lord. He, like Joshua, right here in this moment, he's throwing kind of a holy smackdown on the nation of Israel. He's like, as for me and my house, he's like, who are you going to choose this day? He doesn't say, hey, I want you guys to go home and pray about this for a couple weeks. He doesn't say, hey, why don't you guys get in your Bible study later this week and you guys have, just, just talk about on whether or not you want to serve the Lord. He doesn't say, hey, live in the land for six months. Let's see how this really plays out. Let's see if the promises are still real six months from now. And then let's all gather back up and let's see if this is what God wants you to do. He says, choose what day? This day whom you will serve. Not tomorrow, not six weeks from now, not six months from now. He says, the time's now. The time is now to serve the Lord. He's like, if you don't want more of the promises of God, then choose that today. Don't be wishy-washy in your faith. He says, like, today's the day, not tomorrow. Like, you, you can't have the best of both worlds. Either choose God today or choose not to follow God today, but you can't have both. And he says, as for me and my house, it's for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. He reminds the nation, it's time to stop retreating and time to start ramping up the promises of God. It's time to move in a direction that, that God's people, God has said, I've got you. He's kept the promises of his people together. He's done everything he said he was going to do. And there's this moment where Joshua's like, all right, y'all, here's the deal. It's today or not at all. Choose this day uh, whether you're going to follow after what God has already done. And I love the people. Verse 16. The people replied, I love this. We would never abandon the Lord and serve other gods. I'm like, did y'all read the Old Testament? Like, you are the Old Testament. <laughs> Do you not remember the generations before you? Do you not remember the wandering in the desert? Do you not, not remember the moments that you turned to other things other than God? I, I love that. They're like, we would never do such a thing. Then they go on and they're like, for the Lord our God is the one who rescued us. This is what I love though. They recognize the one who's rescued them. 
They're like, it's the Lord our God who rescued us and our ancestors. Like, they're going all the way back now. They're like from the slavery in the land of Egypt. And he performed mighty miracles before our eyes. And as we travel through the wilderness among our enemies, he, he preserved us. Like, they're giving credit where credit should be given. Like, it's God who did this. We did not do this. By the way, Christ Church, God is the one that brings our church to where he's brought it over the last 50 plus years. Not any of us. It's God. God is the one that will continue to move his spirit and his promises for those that say, hey, we are in. We choose this day whom we serve. He goes on to say this. I love this. Because they're like, man, we know who did it. He goes, it was the Lord who drove the Amorites and the other nations living here in the land. So we too, what do they say? We'll serve the Lord. For he alone is our God. And I love Joshua verse 90. He warns the people. He's like, listen. You're not able to serve the Lord. He's holy and jealous God. He'll not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you abandon the Lord and serve other gods, he will turn against you and destroy you, even though he's been so good to you. And the people answered Joshua, no, what? We will serve the Lord. We're gonna serve the Lord. And I love what Joshua does. He's like, all right, cool. You're gonna serve the Lord. You are a witness to your own decision. Like your witnesses to your own decision. You have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, they replied. I love what they say. We're witnesses to what you've said. We're witnesses to it. What you've said, yes. We are witnesses to what you have said. And, and, and I love this. He goes, all right, go destroy all the idols among you. Turn your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, what would they say? We'll serve the Lord. We'll serve the Lord our God, and we will obey him alone. Nobody else. You know what they're saying there? We're in. Time is now. Like, did you hear God's people? Like, they repeatedly say, we will serve the Lord wholeheartedly. Notice what they're not saying. They're not saying, hey, we'll serve the Lord on Sunday. We'll serve the Lord through Bible study. All those things are great. We'll serve the Lord in rooted. We'll serve the Lord by whatever it is. They're like, every single day, every single moment, every single minute, every single second we're in, we will serve the Lord. This isn't just about being something. This is about living what we've called to be, that we will serve the Lord our God. And you may be sitting here thinking, what does this have to do with me? I think it has everything to do with you and me, everything. If we're truly gonna take the land God has called us to reach and help others find redemption, then, then at some point we gotta decide whom we're gonna serve. The time is now, the time is now. I just think about what God has called us to, the 61,000 within 10 miles of here and the, and the global reach now with our, our online campus and what God's doing there. And, and I'm gonna tell you more about that in just a minute. But I, I just think like last night, we had our Harvest Festival and you heard Alan talk about it. it. It was a great night, but I could be honest, when I got here yesterday afternoon, I was so mad at the weather. I pulled out and I was like, the wind is blowing like 50 miles an hour. And I'm like, where are the bounce houses? Did they already blow away? I got to the corner and I was like, where are they at? And someone's like, we moved it all inside. The company wouldn't let us have it, have it inside or outside. So we moved it inside. And I'm like, well, let's risk it. Let's see. There's some kids that may love rolling down Mason Montgomery in a bounce house. I don't know. <laughs> I was so frustrated. And I, I remember thinking, man, we got all this stuff that was supposed to be outside. now inside and the bonfire, like wasn't even warm because the fire was being blown nine blocks down the street. And it, you know, there was guys that didn't bring their cars to the car show because they were scared their paint was going to get cold. And, and so all these, all these crazy things. And, and, and so we just, like all this stuff, I was like, God, really? And I'm walking through the hallways last night and there were just hundreds upon hundreds of people that I've never seen in my life walking through our building. I just went, my bad. I forgot who I serve this day. The God who's more infinite than the wind. The God who's more infinite than my stupidity. The God who does things even when I don't understand what's going on. And I wanna do something with you today. I'm gonna ask you, just humor me, okay? Those of you online, do the same. Because uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say something. Here's what I'm gonna say to you. I, I just throw it up on the screen. I'm gonna say, choose this day whom you will serve. Okay? I'm gonna say that. And, and then I want you to respond with this. Go ahead and throw that. We will serve the Lord. Now, here's the kicker. I don't want you to respond with that phrase unless you really mean that phrase. Don't give it lip service. And let me tell you why. Because I'm not asking you to say we will serve the Lord to me. I'm just going to ask the question. 
But like, I want this to become the prayer to your God. Like, I'm going to say, choose this day whom you're serving. Your response is going to be, we will serve the Lord. Only say those words. Only proclaim those words if you really want to serve the Lord. But let me warn you, it's not easy. He wants every bit of your heart. Whole heart. He doesn't want you just for an hour on Sunday. He doesn't want you just for certain programming during the week. He wants every second of every day of your life for you to serve him with all that you are. So I know for Trevor to age, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And it's not always pretty and it's not always perfect, but we'll serve the Lord. So let, let's just try it. Just humor me. Um, choose this day whom you will serve. You will serve the Lord. That was good. That was just a trial run. The choir, they're, they're ready, by the way. They're really ready. I know Art is back there, Christian's dad. He's shaking his head right now. I don't even have to look. I'm going to turn around. He's going to be shaking his head. No, see? Oh, hey, he's trying right now. He's like, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> Let's try it one more time. Choose this day whom you will serve. We will serve the Lord. I want you to hear that. God's people proclaiming we will serve the Lord. Some of you are sitting here today. You've never uttered those words in your life. Some of you are scared to death to utter those words. Some of you have been in church your whole life and to utter those words, you're like, it's, it's time again. Like I gotta just tell you, there's moments in my life, there's weeks, there's days where I'm like, I don't wanna serve the Lord. And God's like, okay, well, my promises are still true, Trev. So you either trust me or you don't. Do me a favor. Maybe, maybe this will make it a little even better for you. Just get on your feet. If you don't mind, if you're online, get on your feet. Because sometimes it's tough to get words out when you're sitting like this. So we'll just stretch it out a little bit. Uh, so again, choose this day whom you will serve. We will serve the Lord. I want you to make that your prayer today. And, and in, for some of you today, it, it's you're going to serve the Lord and, and you've never made the decision to be baptized. And every weekend, you know, we baptize people every weekend, but this weekend is we're doing baptism Sunday. You can see I got this, actually, let me make sure I'm not lying. Yep, it's warm. There's water right there. And, and some of you today with that declaration, I will serve the Lord, starts with I'm going to die to an old self. I'm going to raise to new life through baptism for the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the proclamation of Jesus. I'm gonna wash away the old and put on something new. Participating in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. I know at least a couple of y'all are preparing to do that right now. Some of you, that's your decision today. It's time to give your life fully over to the one that keeps promise after promise. It's time to, to give your life over to the one that feeds you when he frees you. It's time to give your life to the one who tears down walls and brings your enemies to their knees. It's time to serve the one that's pursuing you, waiting for you to come. By the way, there's this misnomer that you gotta fix yourself before you come to Jesus. Jesus is like, actually, why don't you just come on to me and let me do the rebuilding? I'll make you into something so much better than what you ever dreamed or imagined. Some of you today are in desperate need of being this beautiful mosaic the brokenness and the beat up parts of your life, God will take those and turn them into something beautiful. It's time to stop retreating and start ramping up. And for some of you today, it's time to do this, to be baptized. All of us have a choice today. For some, it's baptism. For some, uh, it's simply to, to put a stake in the ground that you just proclaim, we will serve the Lord. And I would ask that you, you really pray through that. Make that your prayer. For others, it's the boldness to go take the land. To say, we're in. Anybody and everybody we come in contact with for the gospel, we're in. That God would use you in ways you never even knew imaginable. And so in just a moment, we're gonna offer an opportunity for baptism right here. We're gonna sing. By, by the way, I will tell you, you do not want to leave right now. Some of you guys are like, no, we really want to. No, you don't. First of all, well, this team right here, I'm so excited for the words that we're getting ready to sing together but then the celebration that we're getting ready to have together. In fact, uh, it's actually not even Baptism Sunday, it's Baptism Weekend. Um, and let me tell you why. Um, our online campus, 
we've got four new house campuses that launched a couple of weeks ago in Ghana, Africa. Um, and they're part of Christ Church. And they're in, some of you guys know Joshua, Bob Benny, and Victoria. And Joshua was launching these campuses in Ghana. Um, and yesterday they had 10 baptisms in Ghana to start baptism weekend with us. And then uh, yesterday, we've got a Hicksville, Ohio campus, um, and the, the house campus drove three and a half hours down here so that one of them could get baptized. And they came to the Harvest Festival, hung out, and they got baptized right here on the stage in here. Um, and so in a minute, you're going to see uh, a video of that. Um, then you're going to see some of the images from Ghana, Africa. And then, um, then our screens are going to shift. We've got uh, someone up in the baptistry upstairs um, that's getting baptized. We've got some that are going to be right here in just a few moments that are going to be baptized. Um, and so I would just ask right now as we pray for some of you today, today's the day. Can I just speak like... Some of you, you've watched your men, you've watched your wife, you've watched your kids give their lives to Jesus. Can I tell you, step up and be the spiritual head of your house today. It's time that you say, you know what, as for me and my family, we're gonna serve the Lord. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a part of what God has called me to be. Some of you in this room today, you've been running from it. You, you've got like finger marks on the bottom of that pink chair you've grabbed onto every week. And God's like, it's time to let go and serve me that's you today, man, I'm going to hang out right down here. Come, come talk to me. We'll get you baptized today. We'd love to be a part of that and start that journey with you. But let's pray together. Father, today, God, my prayer right now is as we've gathered, God, I know none of us save anybody. God, you're the God that saves. You're the God of salvation. You're the God of transformation, the God of redemption, the God that reclaims and restores and redeems. God, I pray today for that very thing to take place in the lives of people, that redemption would take place in the lives of people. God, that today, as, as for us in this house, we're gonna serve you. We will serve the Lord. God, no other name will take precedent above the name of God, the name of Jesus. God, today we would live in the power of the name of Jesus, the one that resurrected, the one that lives for us, that we in turn now live for. God, today, may, may we celebrate with the angels in heaven, those that are gonna give life to you, those that already have. God, we love you. We praise you. It's your name we pray. And all God's people said, check this out.